coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to my games room. Today we're taking a look at Snake Oil by Out of the Box Publishing. So look at the report card for Snake Oil. I give the number of players an A-. minus. Now that may seem strange because the game does say it accommodates from 3 to 10 players. But I just think when you if you have 10 players, it's just it's going to be affecting the time adversely, just especially in a classroom setting. If you're playing at home, especially this is like a, you know, as a self-proclaimed here, the world's best party game, um, you know, it's great for that because you don't need to worry about the time so much. But in trying to make sure that everybody has equal opportunities to have all the different rules in, in a classroom setting, I think that you're probably looking at about four to five players maximum for this. But uh, still, very good. And I, I like the fact that it can, go to that higher number if need be. For the learning, I give this game an A+. This game is very similar to Apples to Apples. It uses that same mechanic as Apples to Apples, but what it really does much better than Apples to Apples is that it encourages the discussion piece. So you really have to explain yourself in order to uh, play this game. I'll, show, I'll explain more what I mean with that um, in a little bit. So for the fun, I give this game an A. I think this game, you know, it, it depends on the people that you're playing with. But I mean, I think that the it's the same, as I say, mechanic as apples to apples. But the, the fact that you have to discuss things and make things up, it's just, I found for me personally, I find it more fun, more enjoyable. It's more funny. But I think for some younger students, they might find it more frustrating. So I kind of want to give it an A plus maybe for the higher students and maybe like a B plus for the lower students. Overall, like an A. So for the time, I'm going to give this game an A+. And I give it that because it's so easy and quick to set up and to strike back, back down again and put back into the box. And it's not a kind of game where you have to play to a logical conclusion like the game rules say, like to so many points. Uh, this game you could play, you know, as long as you want, as short as you want. It, it's um, Really, I mean, it's one of those kinds of games where I don't really care about winning or losing or whatever. It's just, it's, it's fun to, to play and it's just fun to be a part of. So I think for whatever your purposes are, you know, you can modify this to, in many different ways to make it suitable to your classroom in, no matter what uh, time limit you're looking at. So for the cost, I'm going to give this game an A. Uh, that's because the game is only $25, which is, you know, fairly cheap as far as board games go, but the fact that this game contains so many cards inside it, and who's to say that you can't accommodate several groups even at the same time, you could be playing many people in your classroom all at one time at this game, um, and all for the cost of the one box. So I think that for that reason it gets an A. So let's take a quick look at how this game is played. So in the game, one person is going to be the person who has a particular role. They have something like if you if you know the term snake oil, this is a you know a person who would take like uh, snake venoms and things and try to sell it off as miracle cures and potions um, for people. And this this sort of goes back a you know, bit in history. But you know what you are here. You know, so one person is going to be the judge character where they're taking a role. So they'll draw a card. And so they can be like a hunter, a zombie, a caveman, or possibly a pirate, a superhero, or a secret admirer. So I'm just going to choose one, just shuffle them up a bit here, and I'm a superhero. So I tell everybody, I am a superhero. Now the other people at the table have a deck of five cards in their hand. And they have to look at these and combine these things together to try to sell something to me as a superhero that they think I would want or need. So what I have here in my hand, I have hope. I have wall, I have worm, I have tent, and I have slime. So nothing here sounds particularly superhero-y, but remember you have to put two of them together. So superheroes, you know, they're all about saving the day and things. So I think hope really goes well there. So wall, worm, tent, and slime. So I've got one here. So what I'm going to do, and honestly this is random, I'm just making this one up here as I go along. So I have a, so when it comes to my turn to explain to the superhero what I want to sell to them, 
then I need to explain to them why I think that my choice is the best choice for them. And this is where the discussion comes in. So I would, I want to sell the superhero a hope tent. A hope tent is a tent that the superhero uses to put over the citizens in a beleaguered area where there's some kind of disaster or crime going on. The superhero places the tent over them so they can no longer see all the bad things that are going on around them. And so that they are, and then, are inspired as visions and images inside the tent and things that inspire hope and make them feel better and calm and relaxed because you know let the superhero do their job without having to worry about all the panicked citizens getting all upset so superhero I think you need to buy yourself a hope tent and so each player would take turns explaining what they have take combining two cards from their hand and trying to sell it to in this case the superhero and whoever Guess that will take the card as their point, but again, like I'm saying, who's to say you, know, you have to play for points or whatever? Just play for fun, and you know the idea is you know let each person have a turn being the the judge character, and they should also be explaining why they are choosing the one that they are choosing. So for me, especially in classes where you have ESL, ELL students. This is a great game, even better than Apples to Apples, because it really forces that component of the discussion and the critical thinking and the explanations and the, the you know translation of the thought to, to speech. So for that reason, I would really recommend this game for those kinds of classrooms. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Hopefully you saw something you liked in Snake Oil. Hopefully you're going to run right up and buy your own copy. If you have any questions about this game or have any other suggestions for games you might like to see on this channel, please leave me a message in the comment section below. But until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with